America, do you love your country enough to drop your hatred towards your fellow man, towards your fellow countrymen? Tonight, we will mediate the hate. I'm Jeff Popik, and this is Beyond the Problems. If you give me one hour, my guest and I can give you a new life. America, let's roll. Welcome to Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Poppett. I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt who said, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. I'm very excited to have three very great minds here joining me tonight on a very, very important topic. There is so much hatred so much vitriol, hostility everywhere. I've never seen anything like it, and I don't think anybody has seen anything like this. Tonight, I've got my three, I, I'm just so honored to have these three men. Um, Patrick Coughlin is a legend in the making, a mediator, a professional mediator, who has mediated 30 billion, billion with a B, 30 billion dollars, of cases, court cases that never had to go to trial. Also, we have Lawrence Gordon. Lawrence is another mediator. He's got a degree in uh, American history, and uh, it's going to be very interesting to get his take. And also, David Essel. David is a life coach. He coaches executives, sports figures, on and on and on. Um, so, gentlemen, thank you tonight for joining. David Essel, the divisions, the vitriol, the enmity, the hatred seem worse than ever. How big of a problem is this? I, you know, Jeff, and to everyone with us, I think it's been a problem for such a long time. We've never really overcome it in this country, uh, going back hundreds and hundreds of years. And what, what I think we've seen in the last number of years is just a massive increase <laughs> that, you know, we can point fingers and blame. Is it the media? Is it um, social media? Is it the YouTube channels with millions of followers that are uh, talking about the vitriol that you're mentioning? And I think it's a combination of everything. You know, we, in, in my work in psychotherapy, we always look at um, when we have a problem, it's like we remove first and add second. That's kind of a philosophy we have in life. So when we're talking about prejudice and we're talking about hatred, it's like the very first thing that comes to my mind because I've been trained this way is what do we need to remove? Like, what do we need to remove? We can't cover it up with positive thinking. We can't cover it up with positive TV ads, with positive PSAs and expect that's going to happen. Will it have an effect is if we were going that direction? Absolutely. But I really think we first need to say what David, needs to be removed? Is it, what, what needs to be okay. stopped? And with everyone on this panel and, and individual with the great minds that you've collected, uh, Jeff, I believe that there's answers here amongst the, the three other people of where do we need to stop? What do we need to stop doing? What do we need to remove doing before we add? And I think if we can start at that place, we might be able to see some good movement in a short period of time. Good words. So, Patrick, uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Um, <laughs> th this is just such an overwhelming problem to me. And I'm right. You're wrong. Right? How big of a problem is that? You know, folks, technology is a wonderful thing. I'm so looking forward to having Patrick Coughlin with us, and technology just wasn't having it. I'm sure we'll have him back another time. However, we still have two magnificent minds, magnificent guests today, David Essel and Lawrence Gordon with us, and we're going to really have quite a show. All right, so Lawrence, I'm going to come to you. Uh, I'm right, you're wrong. How big of a problem is that? It's currently a, a major problem. It's 
things have become so tribal that it's almost impossible to have a meaningful conversation about politics. It's unless everybody's from the same, you know, everybody's Democrat or everybody's Republican. But if you have the, the two together, it is absolutely insane, some of the things we're having to deal with. I mean, people that I've called friends for 15, 20 years, all of a sudden, we can't talk unless we choose to talk about sports or the weather, but we cannot talk about significant issues such as who our next president should be and why. And I think one of the main problems is that we're we're talking about people as opposed to issues. And when I mediate a case, one of the first things I always tell the artists is, guys, let's stick to issues, not people. You don't have to like each other. You don't have to get along. But let's just be open, honest, and stick to the issues. And I, I can remember when I lived in D.C. back in the uh, late 70s. I mean, Democrats and Republicans would fight like cats and dogs. And then when it was all said and done, one might say to the other, how's the, how's the family? Let's go have a drink. Let's go have dinner. And I'll see you in the dog pit tomorrow. That's all gone. We, we just totally lost, lost that. So we've got to find some kind of way to move back, as I said, to issues, not people. And if we can get there, we, we can move this thing in a positive direction, do some things that we need uh, to do. And I want to really dive into the problem. I think it was actually Albert Einstein who said, if you give me an hour to solve a problem, I'm going to spend 55 minutes on the problem, and I'll then take five minutes uh, on the solution. So I really do want to dive in because I think it gives us a better sense of the problem, and then we really can better formulate the solution. So, David, what really, what do we have to strip away um, is social media driving this? What What is driving this? What is fueling this? You know, I, I think there's a lot of different things that drive this. One of the things, though, that I, I want to mention, and Lawrence, you, you really hit it beautifully with what you said. You know, I, I, I support 100% your idea. Um, but I also wonder this, you know, is some of the problem, and I want to talk, start talking about the racial division, which is absolutely out of control. It's so ridiculous. It's 2023, for God's sake. You, you would think it was the 30s in many places, and I mean that sincerely. As a, a counselor and therapist for 43 years, I still hear people talking in these directions, and I'm blown away. And I have to wonder if it's one of the reasons is we haven't spent time with blacks or Asians or uh, or, or what you know? I wonder if we don't we don't have a relationship because we don't understand. So we're judging from a lack uh, of of knowledge. We're judging from ignorance. We're judging from naive, na being so naive. We're judging from what our parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles have said versus sitting down, you know, across the table from someone who's black or who's Hispanic or who's whoever. And I know that this is very like town hall meeting type stuff. I know I'm talking very very grassroots things. But I also know that what we're doing ain't working and we need to be able to inter integrate something else. You know, I was very blessed um, as a 10 year old child, my mom and dad living in an all white neighborhood, an all white school in Syracuse, New York. There wasn't a black child to be seen in hundreds of miles, for God's sake. And they brought a black child from New York City up into the neighborhood. It was called the Fresh Air Fund. I'm 10 years of age. I had never been exposed to a black child. All of a sudden, Michael's living with us 24-7 for the summer, right? And it was unbelievable. The neighborhood erupted. They, I mean, best friends of my parents, I, you know, Lawrence, you said this earlier, you know, best friends of my parents didn't want to talk to them anymore. We were blackballed out of the neighborhood. Uh, my grandfather, who lived an hour and a half away, was called in to, you know, act as a mediator, for God's sake. It was crazy, and, we, and but that was one of the greatest summers ever for me. I learned so much that, you know, a lot of kids my age and a lot of 80-year-olds have never had a chance to interact with an opposite race that you don't like. But why don't you like that opposite race? Why don't you like Republicans? Why don't, like, let's get to the core. You know, you, you talked, um, Lawrence, about issues. I, I don't think Republicans and Democrats necessarily hate each other so much about issues as much as personalities. You know, I I see them hating each other. And we've had some local recent political figures that have no problem saying how much they hate each other. 
And that brings up another question. You know, why are we allowing all these conversations in the media to carry on as much as they are? You know, can we ask the media to be involved with, with the solution? And, and let me make a final comment here. Because I've worked with professional athletes for 43 years, you know, wh wh why don't we follow what the NBA, Mac Major League Baseball, NFL is doing in regards to mental health? You know, they have campaigns, public service announcements. The Indianapolis coach for God, Colts, for God's sake, you know, in 2020 started this Kick the Stigma campaign in order to stick the, kick the stigma about mental health. That's a major issue in our country. It's huge. They're doing something about it, right? And then we look at other sports. NBA Mind Health, two years ago, came out with this incredible resource for people to go get help with mental health. Why can't we do this with diversity? Why can't we do this with racial relations, political relations? Why can't we have public service announcements doing this kind of work? Look at it. it's taking years for these professional athletes to admit that they have serious issues, serious problems. And now they're on TV admitting they have serious problems. Is there a way that we can piggyback onto some of these campaigns in order to deflate the anger, the, the irritability, the hostility, and everything else that's going on. It's questions I think we should be looking at closely. We've got to take a quick break. Guys, stay right where you are. And I think we also are going to want to talk about why are we hating and do are we, have we created a hatred factory in this country? I think that's going to be a very interesting part of this discussion. Folks, stay right where you are. You're watching Beyond the Problems. Are you fun and ready for a dream vacation? Immerse yourself in the historic romance of Venice or capture the sun-soaked paradise of Santorini. Travelfun.biz makes it all attainable for less than you'd expect. Our U.S.-based trusted team of travel concierge are complimentary and take care of every detail. Work hard, play harder. Choose casual luxury. Choose Travelfun.biz to book all of your travel, a family-owned and operated agency. Your fun is our biz. Text us for a quote on your dream vacation today. How Not to Age, my new book coming out in December is now available for pre-order. It is my sincere hope that this book adds not just years to your life, but life to your years. As always, all proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books are donated directly to charity. You're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popick, joined today with David Essel and Lawrence Gordon. I'm talking about mediating the hate. David is a life coach. Short version, David is a life coach. Uh, Lawrence is a mediator, professional mediator. Um, and again, talking about mediating the hate. David, you brought up some interesting points um, a lot of interesting points. Why are we bringing so much hatred to our society? And have we really created a hatred factory? I wonder about the politicians. If I'm running for office, I've got to convince this guy that, that, that the guy I'm running against is bad. And that really is what is going on. That guy is evil. Vote for me. And he's saying the same thing about me. So we begin this vicious cycle, and then the media is only too happy to oblige and further the spin. And so we really are creating the hostility. And David, what would you say to that? Is it, is it the media and the political system that is fueling this? You know, I, I really hear that I'm going to say something pretty controversial, you know, but I, I get concerned with the whole freedom of speech thing here uh, in regards to anger and, and, and vitriol and everything else that we're talking about. You know, if 
People remember not too long ago the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre. Very good friend of mine, Scarlett Jones, lost her little boy, six-year-old Jesse, uh, or Scarlett Lewis, I'm sorry. Um, he was murdered. He was shot down by Adam Lanza as he ran in front of his first grade classroom, screaming to his uh, classmates to run into the closet. His screaming got the attention of Adam and he was gunned down immediately. I tell this story because of what's happened after that. There's a gentleman named Alex Jones that has made millions of dollars by taking this incredibly sad experience going up to the victims' homes of these children with a camera. And when they open the door saying, where's your child? We know it's a cover-up. We know that this is a government cover-up. Your child was never murdered. Okay, how does this kind of stuff even, how is it allowed on YouTube? How, how does this help us as a country? You know, and I know I'm questioning, you know, freedom of speech, and I definitely am questioning it. Because this guy went on for years making millions of dollars. He was finally taken to court. I don't know what the end result is, but it was at least 10 years of him terrorizing families that have gone through this. Now, to me, this is as horrendous as the racial crap that we go through and the political crap. You know, I have to question how much of this should we be allowed to have freedom of speech in regards to speech that is hate filled? I mean, look at what happened at the Capitol uprising and, and the groups that are linked to that. You know, there's so much hate filled speech and yet we allow it because we have freedom of speech now is this too deep of a hole to go to i'm not sure i'm not a political expert i'm not an expert on the constitution i'll be as humble as hell right now and just tell you this is coming up as a logical thing for us to discuss you know i mentioned earlier we have all of these organizations coming out about mental health and having the strength to say hey there's solutions and and we know it's a problem why can't we have the same thing happen with the racial diversion and the political diversion and the debate over the uh, the vaccines and everything else that's created so much hatred? And we haven't even talked about the vaccines, but I can tell you there's a lot of people that hate each other over the freaking vaccines. It's you know, it's you, you said something. Well, I'll use my words, Jeff, maybe not yours, you know, but we've almost created a hate culture where people are on the lookout for something to be angry about, for something to, to to say you're wrong, I'm right about. I could be wrong in my assumption, um, but I, I have a feeling that some of the things I said could really help, and that's the only reason I'm here. So if I offended someone by talking about the Constitution and you feel that that's something as an American I shouldn't say, I'm sorry that that offended you. But well, I will well, always speak openly and honestly in hopes that something like this might lead us to solution. Lawrence, so you're a professional mediator. Um, you experience hatred almost as part of your job, but you actually find a way to bridge people together as opposed to, you know, when they maybe walk into this mediation room, they are looking for scorched earth. They're just trying to beat the other party into submission and somehow, some way, you get them to at least maybe not agree but to see the benefit or at least accept there is another version. How do you even begin to do that? Well, let me, uh, Jeff, let me back up a little bit. Uh, David said something sure. that I found very, very interesting. David and I, in addition to being different races, we're whole opposites in our background. Uh, I grew up in segregated Mississippi. Water fountains for white people, what about the black people, no hospitals for black people, on and on and on. And so I have lived it, I understand it, and I, I would talk to my parents and I could never figure out how you can just hate somebody just because they may have a bald head or they may be darker than you. It makes zero sense. And of course, the, uh, the, the era that we're in now, uh, social media, it's almost like the wild, wild west. I mean, you can pretty much do or say, use my fridge, damn near anything you want to say. And, and it's so easy. It's just so easy to get on your computer and type anything exactly, you want. Exactly. And then, and then now, when I grew up, there was only one truth. You could like it or not like it, but now we have alternative facts, alternative truth. 
I mean, the sun's going to rise in the east and set in the west. How can you have an alternative truth or fact about that? But believe it or not, we have. And, and, and that's that's part of the problem. Uh, we're I live in Florida. We're banning books. We're trying to change African-American history. Uh, so supposedly, so a white kid won't feel bad. But the truth is the truth. And the only way to improve things is you've got to know what the problem is, what the problem was, and then you try to come up with solutions or ways to improve it or change it for the best. I mean, how can this governor, for, for example, talk about the benefits of slavery to black people? I mean, it's absolutely insane, but that's what we're dealing with. So generally, when I'm uh, mediating, and it's, it's usually, you know, property or contracts or an injury case or, or people fighting over an, an inheritance, well, whatever the case might be, you know, the first thing I tell them is, hey, I'm here to help you solve your problem. I can't solve your problem, but I'm going to help you solve the problem. And then I talk about sticking to the issue, not taking it uh, personally, and trying to get to where we need to get to make some progress and get this thing uh, resolved. Think of it this way. And when I played football and I played at Jackson State, I had the benefits of being the uh, left guard for the great Walter Payton running back for the Chicago Bears. There were guys on my team that I could not stand. I mean, they were real difficult people. But guess what? When we go on that field, you put all that aside. It's not about the person. It's about the common goal. It's about the issue. And the goal is to win as a team. And in some ways, mediation is the same way. The goal is to have a win-win for everybody. I mean, I want to talk about win-win. I want to talk about common ground. We have to take a break. Uh, this is just a fascinating subject. Uh, we can talk for hours about this, but we have one hour. So, folks, you're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Poppick. We're going to take a quick break and come right back after this. Stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. And for more than 100 years, American Humane has been protecting animals in times of crisis. And if you're like me, your pet means the world to you, and you want to keep them safe if disaster strikes. American Humane's first responders are always prepared to rescue animals in danger, but you can also help. To learn more about disaster planning and keeping your animals safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. How Not to Age, my new book coming out in December is now available for pre-order. It is my sincere hope that this book adds not just years to your life, but life to your years. As always, all proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books are donated directly to charity. Are you fun and ready for a dream vacation? Immerse yourself in the historic romance of Venice or capture the sun-soaked paradise of Santorini. Travelfun.biz makes it all attainable for less than you'd expect. Our U.S.-based trusted team of travel concierge are complimentary and take care of every detail. Work hard, play harder. Choose casual luxury. Choose Travelfun.biz to book all of your travel, a family-owned and operated agency. Your fun is our biz. Text us for a quote on your dream vacation today. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popick, talking with Lawrence Gordon, a professional mediator, and David Essel, a life coach, talking about mediating the hate. So, Lawrence, really quick, I want to come to you. Uh, we left off mentioning win-win. Um, I am a actually a professional negotiator. Real estate is my background. Everything I do is somehow connected to a negotiation. And we can have a competitive negotiation where I'm just trying to win at all costs. Or we can have really the better alternative, which is a collaborative negotiation, finding the common ground, finding the win-win. What would you say to that? I think uh, 
if there's going to be a, a special situation, I think both parties of both sides as to come into the, uh, the room with a real desire to get it done. If your goal is to blow the world up and, and, and not give an inch regardless, then you're wasting your time and money when it comes to mediation. Because the mediator doesn't make anybody do anything. He or she will try and guide you, will give you some insight in terms of why your position may need to change for A or B, but the mediator does not have the power to say, we're going to do A, B, C. That's a banding arbitration, which I also do by the way, but I much prefer. Well, not the power so much, but maybe the power of influence and the wisdom in getting people to see past the hatred, past the the problem, and getting to the benefit mm -hmm. of that common ground. And I think there's more benefit on the common ground than there might be on beating the other guy up. Um, we've got maybe 30 seconds before we have to take a break, but what what do you say to that? Well, is that the focus, is getting them to see the benefit of the common ground? You know, everybody has heard the old saying, you know, you get more flies with uh, with Hunter. And when you go into a room to, to, to try and resolve an issue or problem with somebody who uh, disagrees with you, you know, anger, uh, yelling, screaming, cursing, very seldom does that lead to anything positive. I have a system called the Hat Method, and it's it's sort of named after the fish, but I eliminated one of the D. Hold and on to that. I want to come back to that definitely after the break, but we do have to take another quick break. Guys, stay where you are. Folks, you're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popic. Stay tuned. You're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popick. Picking up on mediating the hate. David Essel, I want to ask you, are you the problem? Am I the problem? The other guy? Is the other guy the problem? Where is this problem? Well, thank goodness the problem is none of the three of us on this panel. I think we can all agree that. <laughs> never, never me. <laughs> well, but you know what's interesting to me is it seems... The hardest problem in my life to solve are my own problems. Right. It's so easy to tell you how to solve yeah. yours. Yeah. Is that part of the problem? Yeah. It's hard for us to turn <laughs> inward. You know, it, it's funny. A lot of times we have these absolute, you know, statements to people like, you know, I have no regrets in life. I live life to the fullest. And, and when you get through the BS, we find out they have regrets in life, right? So I, I think we need to believe, you know, even for all of us that believe we have not a prejudicial uh, um, uh, ligament in our body, we have to really look inside and ask that question. You know, not just with blacks, but with obese, not just with obese, but with smokers, not just with smokers, but with uh, heroin addicts, not just, you know, we have to really see that we have a lot of judgment going on. A lot of us probably have more judgment going on against other people than we could ever imagine. And that but is it coming from it? But is that hatred? It's it's not the obese. It's not the African-American, it's not the LGBTQ, it's the me. I'm the one, you know, right? Isn't it coming from within that we're bringing all this hatred to the world, but it's really coming from me. Well, it's coming from me, but where does it get into me? Are we born angry, hatred? Are we born prejudice? Are we born, you know, like, so if it's into me, which I agree, I mean, every issue that we're facing, we have a role in, but where did we learn it? And this goes to a point I wanted to bring up that we no one's mentioned yet. The home. Role models. What's going on in society regarding parental role models and prejudice, anger, rage? Where are we getting taught as little kids emotional regulation, accepting others that don't look like us or act like us or behave like us? You know, I, I've written 14 books and one of them is a, a children's book. The Real Life Adventures of Catherine Cat Calloway the First. And it's a story about a little girl in the school that doesn't look like anyone else in the school, doesn't talk like anyone else in the school. Uh, she is shunned. She's by herself in the lunchroom. And the most popular girl in the school, Catherine Cat Calloway the First, decides when all the friends are saying, Catherine, come over and sit with me. 
she decides to go and sit with the little girl. Now, I'm going to end this story really quickly. Still buy the book, of course, even though when I tell you what the end result is. But at the end of the story, we find out this little girl that everyone shunned because she looked different, acted different, spoke different, had a gift that the whole school benefited from. Our hatred at homeless, our hatred at other colors, other religion, it's all internal. And the question is, where does it begin? What's it the is. origin? And then how do I remove it? You know, um, Lawrence, I don't so know when, actually, when in, in your school, so, how, where, did you have um, uh, white players at all? I'm, I'm assuming it was it a high. A, high I, it, it's, it's, it's funny you asked that question because I wanted to share a little anecdotal story with you. Um, the black kids and the white kids in Greenville, Mississippi, where I grew up, we went to different schools. Black kids in one school, a lot of white kids in, in uh, the other school. But the thing that was so funny, on the weekends, the football players from the black school and the white school would meet up, have drink uh, beer that we weren't supposed to be drinking, and play uh, touch football. And I remember the uh, the quarterback from the white school invited us to his graduation party. And of course, when we showed up, the parents had a fit. And it was it was in May, June, so it was warm enough to swim. They had a swimming pool. They were quite well off. After that party, the mother drained and the father drained the pool and repainted it. Now, you you don't come out of the womb hating people. I mean, it is learned, it is taught, and somehow we've got to find a way to to reach the point where you know everybody is okay until they prove otherwise. Not just because they're this, they're that, black, white, green, purple. Up there. And if we can ever get to that point, which I have my concerns, I, I don't think I will live to see a, a U.S. of A where color means nothing. And I think the only way that will ever happen is if we interbreed to the point where you can't tell A from B. Otherwise, I don't want, I'm not ready. I, I'm personally not ready to throw my hands in the air and say, it's not going to happen. I'm here doing this because guys like us have to make it happen. So, Laura, but you as a mediator, you, even the acronym you had mentioned before, let's just go through that real fast because accepting other people, accepting different viewpoints, isn't that kind of where we can start? Isn't that just the start, the, the, the smallest baby <laughs> step on the longest journey? But is that a good starting point? Well, you know, it's 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 easy to say, but don't forget now, we are combating <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years where people were taught just the opposite. And the, the other situation that we're dealing with, uh, most uh, people who study demographics agree that probably within the next 25 years, white people are going to be a minority in, in this country. And I think many, if not most, are terrified of the thought of being a minority. So the pushing... That's, an, that's Lawrence, that's actually an interesting point. I think a lot of this stems from fear. Yes. I think so many of our problems are stem from our own fears. And we live, whether we recognize it or not, we live very fearful existences. So maybe, uh, David, speak to the fear how much does each person, how much are we dealing with our own fear in the way we communicate with the world? You know, I, I want to go to this this whole point of the racial issue because I just feel it's something that hurts my heart. It, re it really does. You know, Lawrence was, was blessed growing up to have uh, interactions with other races. You know, I was blessed. I played basketball for a couple of years at Syracuse University. And Lawrence, I got to tell you something interesting several times in practice I had the black kids coming to my aid if I was getting in a scuffle with someone else even more so than some of the white kids you know so I I, I felt I feel that I have I have a huge advantage over a lot of people because of my past experiences but that's not an excuse saying that other people can't have that same experience and I want to go back to the whole thing of interacting Jeff and Lawrence you know okay. if we aren't 
ever sitting next to someone who is black, who's Hispanic, and who's talking, who we're talking to, you know, we'll never get through that fear. And Jeff, your question is it fear based? Hell yeah, it's fear based. But you know what I ask everyone who's prejudiced against someone with a different color? As I say, tell me how many negative experiences you've had with that race. And you know, the odds I... are it's usually zero or one. But usually it's not hardly, I've, I've never been attacked by a black person, by a, a Hispanic person. I've never been cheated. I've never been. So you've nothing has ever happened negatively with you with this race, but you hate them or you don't trust them or you're afraid of them. You know, and that's the type of logic I want to try to get out here. And this is where media can come into play. I'm going to go back to it. Television is one of the biggest problems in the world right now. Television can be one of the greatest solutions in the world right now. If we had LeBron James I wanna, and David, someone... David, I want to I want to pick up on that point, sure. but we've got to take another break. Um, folks, you're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popick. Stay tuned for more on Mediating the Hate. We'll be right back. How Not to Age, my new book coming out in December is now available for pre-order. It is my sincere hope that this book adds not just years to your life, but life to your years. As always, all proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books are donated directly to charity. Are you fun and ready for a dream vacation? Immerse yourself in the historic romance of Venice or capture the sun-soaked paradise of Santorini. Travelfun.biz makes it all attainable for less than you'd expect. Our U.S.-based trusted team of travel concierge are complimentary and take care of every detail. Work hard, play harder. Choose casual luxury. Choose Travelfun.biz to book all of your travel. A family-owned and operated agency. Your fun is our biz. Text us for a quote on your dream vacation today. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. And for more than 100 years, American Humane has been protecting animals in times of crisis. And if you're like me, your pet means the world to you, and you want to keep them safe if disaster strikes. American Humane's first responders are always prepared to rescue animals in danger, but you can also help. To learn more about disaster planning and keeping your animals safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. Welcome back, folks. You're watching Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popick talking today with a professional mediator, Lawrence Gordon, and a life coach, David Essel, and uh, talking about this hatred that is pervasive. I mean, pervasive in our society, where it's coming from. We may not solve this problem in one hour. I don't think we will, but let's try to get to a baby step, a takeaway. Where do we go from here? And it's a problem. You know, I, as an adult, if I want to solve the problem, but the other guy doesn't, how do we solve that problem? So, Lawrence, I mean, again, as a professional mediator, you said earlier, people have to come to the table wanting to solve the problem. Is there a way to coax them into, again, seeing the benefit of getting to that common ground. Well, I think, um, let me add something that, that I didn't mention earlier. In addition to being a uh, professional mediator since 2010, I'm also in my 13th year as vice mayor of a small town in uh, Florida, uh, the town of Haverhill. I was the first person of color to ever be elected to the council. And when I came, uh, when I made the decision to run for office, it was just a nightmare. I mean, people were tearing up uh, signs and, and, and screaming and yelling and cursing. And, and it, what is this guy after? What does he want to do? I was the first person of color to move into this neighborhood. And then what happened was, it's a relatively small town, about a mile square, about 3,000 people. I literally knocked on every door so they could see me face to face and tell me, hey, what's your concern? Why don't you like me? You don't know me. Let's get to know each other. And it's very important that leaders say and do the right thing because most people don't want to lead. Most people want 
to follow the rules and follow the leaders, so to speak. So if we could get uh, more leaders to step up and, and encourage people to be kind to each other, talk to your neighbor, don't make a decision without talking to people. You know, oh, I see this guy. Oh, he's he's awful. He's a black guy, whatever, whatever. An another little story. A friend of mine, he's been my one of my best friends for 42 years. And we lived in the same neighborhood for a while. And I'm looking out my kitchen window and I see this guy walking around the house next to me, which was for sale. And I look out the window and I say to my wife, look at this guy. And he's a white guy. I said, look at this guy. He looks like a horse's butt. I had never even met the man. Didn't know his name, but I made that 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 jump based on him being one color, me being another. And I said, he just spent two weeks at, at my house while I was traveling a week or so ago. Great guy. So that's part of the part part of the key is is, is getting to know people and not jumping yep. to uh staff conclusions about people that you don't know, you've never met. Just because your great uncle said black folks aren't such and such and such, and they probably use the N-word and on and on and on. We've got to break that cycle, break that chain. Got and, to. And our leaders need to step up. But, it, you know, and this is maybe bringing us somewhat for a full circle. Um, David, you were talking about the media. Um, one of the things that really saddens me, um, the people in the media um, are so good at what they do, better than me, <laughs> Um, we've got the conservative talk radio and we've got the uh, liberal talk radio and they're bashing yeah. each other and it stirs this, really this enmity, this hatred, the passion behind <laughs> it. When if these guys could use their talents and they are so talented to bridge people together rather than, oh, that side, the left is evil or the right is evil to start building on common ground and we have common ground we're all human david say something to this well i i think jeff you know it, it's going to be very difficult to get someone who's so ingrained in their belief system that they're right and everyone else is wrong uh to be able to start to moderate themselves and to say hey listen uh let, let's talk about the other side of the coin however I don't think that that may, may be happening, but there is an opportunity for people to come on who are in, in the middle of the road, who can talk about both sides of the topic, who yep. can uh, understand the fear that may be in someone who's never sat next to a black woman or a black man because they were told, as Lawrence just said a minute ago, you know, that blacks are evil or they're, uh, they're unkind or they're whatever they may be, all the different uh, words utilized. I, I really do believe we need to have that interaction to see and to shatter it, but it's not going to happen by doing what we're doing. And I want to go back to the TV thing because, you know, listen, there are, the advertisers are, are not dumb. They put money into MRI studies to find out what it is that's going to bring someone back and back and back. And television stations do the same thing. If there's a clip that they show a thousand times because it's registered high on the dopamine receptor uh, meter, they're going to show that same where clip a thousand times, that person getting beaten by the same hose or whatever it is, you know, because that draws us in, that gets us addicted. And so part of the responsibility is us shutting the damn news off, not turning on the channels that are attractive to us because they're beating people up that we don't like, even though we've never met. You know, again, I'm going back to the saying that we need to be making some major changes. This could be the very first step for the three of us and for people who are with us. But if there aren't changes being made, and I'll go back again to television, I think TV has a great responsibility and a great opportunity to start looking at PSAs from a unity point of view versus a diversity point of view. And and if you look at it, part of, of if, if you've noticed in the past five to six years, some of these advertisers are way ahead of the game, man. I mean, they have every type of sexuality, every type of race holding hands, every type of race kissing, HIV individuals, gay, uh, 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 transsexual kissing during an HIV uh, medication pill. I mean, they're blowing it out of the water, and I think it's good. I think this is great, seeing a black man with a white woman having different, uh, a, a dinner in a restaurant. I think this is all going to help. 
but it's going to be a slow process. And what can we do to speed it up? Well, first of all, look inside each of us. Lawrence just That's, gave a great example of how he called some white guy a fat butt or something, and then all of a sudden, a number of years later, the guy's <laughs> hanging out at his house. I think that's just a classic story that could happen to everyone freaking every day when you make up your mind to slowly start to change your belief systems. And my last statement I'm going to make on that and is this. You're probably going to have to work with a counselor, a therapist, uh, a psychotherapist. You're going to have to work with someone because these are deeply held subconscious beliefs. All the positive thinking in the world won't do crap when we have a belief system in the subconscious that's been fed there from generation to generation to generation. I worked with my first um, skinhead, my first white supremacist. I couldn't believe it. I mean, the the negativity, and I worked with him one time and I one session, I would never do it again. The negativity, the anger. The rage was so deep that all I kept doing was sending him love throughout the whole hour session. I just sent him love. I said, I can't get into anything with him. I can't get into a disagreement. I can't get into an argument. Logic has no role here. It really doesn't when you have the subconscious that beaten down, you know, nope. and they become cults. And so and they it's... look for people who are looking to be culted, that are looking it... to be part of a group, that are David... outcasts, that don't have their own identity yet. But and this these is, groups David, will prey D on these individuals. David, but you hit on the nail on the head also. I think this is an addiction, and it is something we kind of need to look at. <laughs> Folks, we've got to take a quick break. We're going to come back with one more segment with these amazing men, uh, great minds, and we're going to get to some solutions. We'll be right back. How Not to Age, my new book coming out in December is now available for pre-order. It is my sincere hope that this book adds not just years to your life, but life to your years. As always, all proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books are donated directly to charity. Are you fun and ready for a dream vacation? Immerse yourself in the historic romance of Venice or capture the sun-soaked paradise of Santorini. Travelfun.biz makes it all attainable for less than you'd expect. Our U.S.-based trusted team of travel concierge are complimentary and take care of every detail. Work hard, play harder. Choose casual luxury. Choose Travelfun.biz to book all of your travel, a family-owned and operated agency. Your fun is our biz. Text us for a quote on your dream vacation today. I'm Jeff Bobbitt. This is Beyond the Problems. We are almost out of time. Lawrence, I want to come to you um, talking about hatred. Um, what would be, you've got a minute, what's your prescription for how to heal these divides, this hatred? I think uh, one of the first things we've got to do is make an effort on both sides to just talk to you. I mean, we formulate these opinions, we take these positions, and a lot of times we have no idea what the truth actually is. You know, back in the old days, you could walk over to your neighbor's house when they weren't there and go in the fridge and get some eggs or whatever and leave a note. I hope and pray that we can see that again when I have my, my doubt that that's going to uh, ever happen. But the key is communication, no matter what the... The issue is of the situation is whether it's a marriage, it's a discussion, a mediation, yep. communication, communication, communication. And if we can do more of that, just to talk to each other with an open mind, with an open mind, you don't have to agree. You know, one of the things I tell people when we're mediating is I want you to empathize with the other side. You don't have to agree, but just listen and understand. 
And, and uh, you have, as I said earlier, let me run through the the Haddock situation. H A D O C K, sort of spelled like the pitch, but a little bit different. The H, we've got one okay. minute. The H means <laughs> just hear and listen. The A, accept each other's views. As I said, you don't have to agree, but accept the views. D is depersonalized. Talk about issues, not people. The O is for open mind because open mind res- open minds resolve situation and, and, and issue. And lastly, the K is no, I'm sorry, the C for care. The C stands for empathize. Empathize with the other side. Just listen. Again, you don't have to agree, but try and understand. And the K, know the issues, know what you're talking about, and come from truth and fact. If we can have everybody work with those rules, and we'd have nirvana, but we got a long ways to go. That would be that would be beautiful. And David, I want to come to you. I love your passion. Give it to me in 30 seconds, the prescription for how we heal this hatred. You've got 30 seconds. Give it to us good. All right. In 30 (laughs) seconds, number one, take away anything that creates that feeling that someone is less than you. If it's a if it's a radio show, TV show, movie, doesn't news, whatever it might be. If it's promoting something that says this person or this group is less than you, this religious group, this uh, 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 um, gender, whatever it might be, walk away. Be willing to walk away, number one. Number two, uh, always make sure that you're looking to smile at every person in the world. And I know this is the simplistic thing in the world, but when you're walking by someone of the opposite race, oftentimes they don't even look in your eyes. Make sure you try to catch their attention and smile. Make them feel human. These are just simple steps to take as we continue this process of trying to figure out how to get rid of the hatred and diversion, diversity in this world. And maybe it's one team, one family, one country. Maybe that's what it is. We all play from the same side. We're not each other's enemy. We really are each other's keeper in a grand sense. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I think we kind of made that baby step. Folks, you've watched Beyond the Problems. I'm Jeff Popick. Catch us on the web at beyondtheproblems.com.